hello everybody welcome to the round three player th round three of the play-ins sorry um we've got zahu with skaven versus strider with lizards so um strider completely boring standard build of six block uh, only two re-rolls going for the bench rather than the third re-roll and he's actually using the chameleon skink on offense interesting i guess maybe just you know extra chance to pick up the ball versus rats it's pretty good and this is a bit dodgy right this isn't the easiest game for lizards here versus uh rats rats can get around he's got two with block one with strip he's got a tackle blitzer guard blitzer so pretty and a jugs roger so pretty standard probably this this looks like it's standard right i guess maybe it's one block one wrestle gutter but um i guess it looks like a pretty standard rat team 13 players four rerolls no apple Yeah, the strip is pretty scary, isn't it? So, like, that's the thing. So, you know, like, while why the lizards have got all the strength in the world... ...to bully the clan rats mercilessly... ...the uh, four gutters, you know, have got victims... Oh, my God, we've got a fail pickup into the crowd. Okay, so the rats might be... Uh, <laughs> it might be skinks versus gutter runners in the backfield which uh which looks you know not great for the skinks but he's going the wrong side. okay he's going to tag him okay uh i think this is the wrong side isn't it i'd want to uh be blitzing here and coming down this way so he's blitzing here he just wanted to put two guts in that side before he puts the blitzer in this side and the other two gutters in as well. So fair enough, it was safe moves first, wasn't it, putting those in there? Does cut the corner. So yeah, pretty pretty nice turn from Zahu and uh pretty sticky situation for Strider. Doesn't even get the three D in. Doesn't pow him. Oh god. And he used the reroll on the pickup as well, did Strider. So he's already down to one reroll for the rest of the half. This is uh looking pretty terrifying for him, I think it's fair to say. Right, this could be a good two nil down drive for him, half. Feels a dodge. Boy, howdy. It's time to get rowdy. It is possible to have any kind of rematch, yeah. Yep, they could, they could, yep, could be rematches. Well, this is uh, an easy 2D on the ball. Well, he has committed the guard. Not what I would have done, but who can say if it's good or bad? I guess he kind of had to. Obviously, he's got the tackle to hit here. I guess he had to commit the guard, right? Maybe he should have. Maybe he just could have won deed, right? I don't know. Maybe he could have won deed and had a bit more to react afterwards. Could have got the guard in and stuff as well. I don't know. Maybe he could have been a bit greedy at that turn, right? He could have gone for a 1D. Was, could, could he have blocked this guy free with a roger? That's a bit dodgy though, isn't it, with a longer? Just get the power from the 2D. Chameleon skink OP. Oof. Just get the crocs in. And one gutter. 
And he's got a he's got a bit of a sideline cage, hasn't he? If he can make the pickup, uses his second and final reroll. Flip me. So I think now we are uphilling the Crocs right for a push. Probably. And then dodge to hit the ball. Which isn't great, is it? I hate using a gutter just to punch somebody. Like pointlessly punch somebody. I think it's not what you want to do. And he blitzed with the Roger. Hmm. No, I don't like this. Like every turn without ball stuff, it's letting it's letting Strider recover, isn't it? And like I know obviously the look the uphill looks terrible. The uphill looks terrible, but uh I don't know. Maybe, maybe just trying to get, you know, call back and then like you still got plenty of time. I'd be going for two mil this half though, like Honestly, as rats, I'd be going for the two nil half. I would, I would have been. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, I generally don't play rats because I'm not a, I'm not a scumbag dice roller. But if you're going to play a scumbag dice rolling team, then you know, be a scumbag and roll some dice, isn't it? <laughs> scumbag dice roller. Yeah, you know, you know the type in Arian. People like in Arian and. Uh, <laughs> And Chunter, <laughs> you know, these people who roll dice in a dice game. Ugh. Disgust of us. Sol, yeah, you know. Daedle. Ugh. Rolling dice in a dice game. What the hell? Let me just have my dwarves and, and only roll two dice blocks and only do safe moves continuously. None of this uphill bollocks. <laughs> No high variance players, thank you very much. Let me be strong and stable. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this, is, this is no defense, right? Like he did, he did that reset turn, but he hasn't got any defense. He somehow kind of had two reset turns and has that mounted absolutely zero offense, defense, offense, whatever you want to call it, pressure. Like free Saurus, just Saurus to ro free to roam around, make a very solid cage. Dub skulls there, no rerolls. Ooh, so now we've got the uh, chain for the roger, right? Now we've got the roger chain into a two D on the ball. Very exciting. doesn't do it well I quite like chaining the roger like you'd have to dodge with a gutter right you'd have to 3 plus 3 plus with a gutter so in case you didn't see it there because it looks like Zahu didn't or didn't want to but I mean I would have wanted to if I was Zahu um, this gutter that went all the, all the way up here could have dodged here uh, he could have come in here dodged here dodged here Another player could have run around in here. He could have blocked him, pushed the roger in there. Then the roger could have punched him out the way. And then you're, uh, you've got your tackler to come and hit the ball. Pretty nice. Or you could have uh, pushed him to there. And then... I guess you could have, like... I mean, it's pretty hard to get two players in there to double push him. But yeah, I guess you technically could have like also double pushed him somehow to get the roger hit on the ball, but I wouldn't really care so much about the double. Have to dodge past shadowing. <laughs> I mean, you could also go for a four plus dodge in, right, through the uh, crocs. But I guess I wouldn't care so much about shadowing with a movement nine versus a movement seven. But I, w I did forget shadowing, to be fair. But yeah, I quite like that. I quite like just chaining him in, hit that, and then get the tackle hit. I think this is too passive. I think you can't afford to be passive as rats, you know, especially when like, especially when you've got like loads of rerolls. Like he's already spent three, right? He's we spent all of his rerolls now, just to do boring stuff, right? 
and like screen versus now obviously to be fair strider only has two rerolls and he spent them so 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 you know like screening does get better but screening versus anybody in general yeah exactly exactly see rose yeah so like so the way the game works now is screening is worse because people can dump free rolls on one turn so they can like make really good turn sevens and really good turn eights so so just being passive and screening is is just not as good anymore now obviously in this case it's a bit different because strider has spun both of his re-rolls and he, he so he can't do that but it does make yeah exactly screening with rats it like they are one of the teams where you know you're very incentivized to be aggressive anyway right is he gonna surf this rat yeah good yeah, Strider is good at the Blood Bowls, that's for sure. Wow, does activate the Crocs. Interesting, that is an interesting activation, isn't it? That could have gone horribly wrong for him. That could have gone horribly wrong for him. I don't know how the rats managed to use all of the rerolls, to be honest. Like, cause they, just because they played so passively, that's the thing. Oh my god, yeah, he's not that good, is he, Strider? <laughs> but there you go, people can make mistakes, can't they? God knows I made a massive one versus, uh, versus Galentio, so... There we go, we move him up first thing. He has seen him in the in between the turns. Gets the power. And this is time to perfection, turn seven, like basically no defense from Zahu. Does do this does do the seventy five percent dodge? No. Did he not see that it was a dodge? <laughs> Did he not see it was a dodge? Like, the Crocs block is better, isn't it? That must He just mustn't have seen it was a dodge. Like, he mustn't have seen the gigantic Rat Ogre. Because he could have blocked it with block, couldn't he? Because he's dodged away from it. Yeah, that was just a just a miss-see. There you go. A Blood Bowl 3 mistake rather than a Blood Bowl mistake, obviously. Had, a, had he had complete knowledge of the game state, he would not have done such a terrible move. No, so he gets the both down. So it's a three plus to score. For um for Strider. He could make a conga line. And so what 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 he could have done here to increase his odds a tiny amount was to have put the chameleon skink in the end zone first, so if he failed the pick up it could have scattered up to the other skink, who could have failed the catch. And then he could have skinked up to the other. So he could have actually made, like, he could have put both Saurus in front. Because they're less likely to catch the scatter. And then two skinks in the end zone. So that it, it would have had maximum chances to scatter into the, into the, onto the skink in the end zone. So, you know, slight optimization was possible there. <laughs> the page column strat, yeah. Yeah, the, the conga line strat, I mean, it's ludicrous, right? It's ludicrous, but it's about the same chance as getting a, a timeout on the kickoff uh, chart and then getting Mr. Throw to do a long bomb to a blitz who's uh, managed to get himself in the end zone. So, you know, you've got to try these things. You have to try these things. <laughs> Oh, hello, Hoban Bubble. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is. It is. It is indeed, C Bros. Yep. Yep. Like, it, it's just correct, isn't it, to give yourself the chance. That's it. There's, there's no doubt that moving those players first was, was just better. And it might not even be correct to do it how I said it might be better to do it a different way, but like something. Something is better than nothing. Only two lizard teams are two and all. 
Oh man. Oh man. So actually, it could have been better for me going uh, going two and one if I'd if I'd won the last game. <laughs> Because, <laughs> yeah, I really don't want lizards as dwarves. I mean, don't want orcs either, right? Orcs are really hard to beat. Orcs, you're looking at getting lucky to get your drive done and then uh, winning the toss in overtime and then getting lucky again. So you've got to get lucky basically three times as dwarves versus orcs. Whereas versus lizards, you've just got to get insanely lucky. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, one turn fails. Didn't really watch it. Um, don't know how good a bat it was. But it was no rerolls, right? So it was low odds anyway. Uh, loads of strength four. No, no, li lizards are worse for dwarves than orcs. Or, uh, orcs, orcs aren't even that bad, right? Because they've got loads of blockless guys. Like, if they've got guard, they've got blockless guys. If they've got block, they haven't got guard. So, lizards are just a nightmare for dwarves, I think. And they've got so much more speed. Like, orcs are bad. Orcs are really bad, don't get me wrong. Orcs are really bad now that biggins are movement 5. Like, that's insane. It's insane that biggins are movement 5. Horrible for dwarves that biggins are movement 5. But still, they're not movement 6. <laughs> Yeah, like, I think Dwarves are better versus Underworld, right? Um, but Lizards can still be Underworld, as we've seen in this, uh, as we've seen in this competition. Lizards have beaten Underworld a few times. So, maybe I should just come Lizards. Yeah, I'd say that, Hub and Bubbin. I would say that, yeah. And Lizards were always going to be popular, I guess. Like, I think they shouldn't be, because I think Underworld should be a bad matchup for them, but maybe they're not that bad. Dio said he didn't think it's that bad for the Lizards, didn't he? So maybe it's not that bad for the Lizards. Maybe I underestimated Lizards. Like, I mean, obviously I underestimated Lizards' popularity, but maybe I was incorrect to underestimate Lizards' popularity. Maybe it was maybe it was me that was wrong rather than the players. Yeah, he did, yeah. I mean I'd still expect him to lose, but he can still lose and it still be not as bad as people think, can't he? Like three games doesn't prove anything. What you would need is you would need You'd need a computer simulation of Dio versus Dio, or uh, you know whoever Elliot versus Strider, and then have them play a thousand games, and then see what the win rate is of the uh, Underworld, and then if the Underworld win fifty four percent of the time, it's still a pretty flipping good matchup for the Underworld, isn't it? You know, <laughs> like fifty fifty four to forty six is still a pretty good pretty good advantage. But, like, obviously it's not 80% Underworld or anything, is it? Ooh, d Double Skulls doesn't re-roll. Which stops him getting a bit of heat. Maybe you could have done some safe moves. Maybe you could have done so you know, move these skinks. Got some safe moves in. But he just, uh... Just blocked with blocked. Like, at least his players were standing. It's the most unforgivable unforgi thing you can do, isn't it? Is not stand your players up. I would never. <laughs> Is he going to blitz then then move back here? Well, I guess he's already got people back. Problem is the, the Crocs can base the ball, which... I know it's kind of shit, but it's something, isn't it? And sure enough, he is going for the Crocs ball base. I'm pretty sure. Oh! He rolls a one. I'm sure he was going for the Crocs ball base. Yeah, Fumble Competitive is different, though, right? Because Fumble Competitive has skills. 
and lizards on fumble competitive are a lot worse than lizards on like like most games are between like the average team plays like about five games or something so at less than five games underworld absolutely annihilate lizards <laughs> of course they do you know but then when you when you uh, equalize it for uh, the lizards having six block and it being equal TV and the the underworld not getting inducements in this there was a lot there was lots of things to protect the lizards for this tournament so yeah maybe maybe I did underestimate lizards and I think I would have rather gone lizards than uh, I think I would have rather gone lizards than underworld. Just because I just don't like lizards that much. I'm oh, sorry, I don't like underworld that much. I haven't played them that much. I know liking them doesn't really matter for winning tournaments. Obviously, like you know, for the best choice to win the tournament, that's what you should take. But then there is the whole for comfortable, isn't it? The comfort level. What? I don't understand where his blitz is coming here. I don't know why he didn't three dice blitz that gut runner. I'm absolutely fucking nuts. Is he going to hit the ball? I guess he must be. That's the only reason not to have hit. Yeah, okay, he's hitting the ball. I guess it was only a dodge, wasn't it? It was only one dodge to hit the ball, fair enough. Still think I would have probably liked to have 3D'd the gutter and stand in front, but... I guess like 2D on the ball is 2D on the ball, isn't it? With two rerolls, like he really ins like with this build, he's only done the two rerolls instead of the three, so like he's he's really heavily in incentivized to play super safe, isn't he? Push the ball of shadowing, yeah. I'm sure he's good. <laughs> well now we get the three D on the ball. Now it's looking very bad for Zahu. Can also just force him in early. But he gets the power, doesn't have to force him in early. Pushes him off shadowing again. Oh, the ball goes in the end zone. <laughs> Is he foul here? Let's stand. Picks up. Doesn't want to leave it on the ground versus L's. Pretty good idea. Ballsy, ballsy GFIs and pickups. And now it's looking really, really bad for Zahu. Puts the ball next to shadowing. <laughs> Gets the KO. He dodged out. And then he doesn't shadow. He shadows this time! Oh my god. Oh, it doesn't matter. He already scored. Okay. Shadowing. Doing absolutely nothing. Woo! But it triggered. It triggered with a minus two movement. Very exciting. So is 10v10? But uh, Strider still has both rerolls and three turns to score. Only three skinks. It just looks so, it looks and sounds so weird, doesn't it? With all of the blocks and the dice rolling, like the... 
I had a thing hiding the dice because I, I felt it looked better not having a million dice pop up on the screen all the time. But then obviously I thought it might make it a bit easier to see what the hell's happening if you saw a million dice, but it really doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't help. You just see a million dice pop up. For no reason. So I think you've got to dodge with a tackler here, right? Either to blitz the scoring threat or to come round the back. But I think whatever happens, you've got to dodge through this here on the three plus. Okay. Oh, he puts the he puts the roger on the ball. Okay, that's better. That's probably better than hitting the skink, isn't it? But now we can just chain him out, so this isn't very good. Still chain him out with a double GFI. I think double GFI chain out's pretty good. Or maybe just you can do it with this somehow. Well, you can just 2D him instantly. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I didn't even look at this, cause, but it was just so easy. Very good, Cheegan. <laughs> Top tier trolling from Cheegan. <laughs> and yeah, this was the problem. He put those guys on it. And he just chained them away easily. And now it looks really bad. It does feel more BB with all the dice run, but there's just so many dice and they all just like randomly turn up in like, you know, like they just randomly turn up in random orders. Like there, there's a three and a two happening, right? And they're not all in order and it just like, it just makes it all really difficult to... It doesn't really help. I feel like he could have got 2D there, couldn't he? Could have just assisted with this and then the Blitzer could have dodged. Extra. Like it's tough and dice rolly, but then you know your life is tough and dice rolly versus lizards. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. Oh my god! If he fails because of the, if he fails because he's movement seven, that'd be amazing. But to be fair, this is a this is a three turn drive, right? So his his on the ball made him essentially movement eight for this drive, but except he didn't use his full movement seven, and then he wins the match. So we assume that he made both GFIs. <laughs> <laughs> and he had no rerolls, so he was only seventy percent to get the touchdown. And uh, and if he hadn't done it, it would have gone overtime. And the rats only had KOs. And uh, that could have been that could have actually been very easily been a win for Zahu in overtime, right? Very easily been a win for Zahu. That could have very easily been a win for Zahu. Only 70% for the two GFIs, no rerolls left. And of course, I can't win 75% versus Galentio, but never mind. <laughs> but anyway, yep, congrats to Strider, who goes through to play one of the two and all guys. Commiserations to Zahu, who is out um, of the competition. Thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.